Your best friend is home alone. It's dark. And they hear three loud, distinct knocks from the front door. Opens the door and finds two friendly law enforcement officers. And they say, do you mind if we come in and ask you some questions? We've had some vandalism in the neighborhood, and uh, we're just trying to get to the bottom of this. Sure. So they come in, they sit down at the kitchen table, and they begin their conversation. Meanwhile, you're at home. You're about to sit down and watch your favorite television program. You pull out your phone, scrolling through social media, and you see a picture of your friend's house. You're like, what's going on? You keep scrolling. You see another photo of your friend's house, except this one has the caption, breaking news, vandalism. You think to yourself, what's going on? You call your friend in a panic, doesn't pick up the phone. So you travel as fast as you can to your friend's house, and when you get there, you see this. You see a wall of TV cameras facing your friend's house. You look over to the left, and you see a neighbor being interviewed, and this neighbor's irate. She's screaming, all of the houses on this street have been vandalized, except this one, your best friend's house. And I'm pretty sure they have the suspect in there right now, and they're interviewing them. You're like, wow, this is really happening. Meanwhile in the house, your best friend is having this conversation with law enforcement, and they say, you know what? We think we're done here. You know, thank you very much. We appreciate you being so cooperative. Do you mind if we just look around the house a little bit? We want to, you know, exonerate. We want to we try and figure out if you're involved or not, but also see if there's any vandalism you may have missed. Sure, go ahead, your best friend says. And law enforcement starts to search the house. They find three things. One, a receipt on the counter for a dozen eggs. Two, in the garbage can, an empty egg tray. And three, in the refrigerator, this fancy-looking egg crate, futuristic-looking thing, that only has two eggs left in it. So law enforcement, they both look at each other, they look at your best friend, and they say, do you mind explaining what happened to the 10 eggs here? And this is the moment your friend takes a deep breath, and they say, I think it's time for me to get a lawyer. And they say, you're right. So they arrest your friend. So I just share with you a very dramatic story um, to try to engage you in, in why, it's, why the Internet of Things is making my job easier. So hi, I'm John. I'm a digital forensic examiner. I typically get involved in people's lives when they're most vulnerable, like your friend accused of a crime, or a nonprofit or a corporation dealing with a data breach, someone hacked into their network, some criminal is taking files, stealing files. How long were they there? Why did they do it to me? How did this happen? I'm there to seek the truth. I'm there to find digital evidence and try to tell a story. So what are the Internet of Things? And it's a pretty common word or phrase that's being used today. You probably have some of this in your house today. I like to break it into two categories, old stuff and new stuff. The old stuff has been around for 50, 100 years. Cars, thermostats, even baby changing tables are now connected to the Internet. Then we have new stuff. The new stuff includes hmm, what some entrepreneur came up, some great idea that people need. Typically, you see this stuff on crowdfunding websites, a monitor that you can put next to your bed that'll monitor your sleep patterns. You need that. And oh, by the way, all this is connected to the internet. That's what makes it an internet of thing. One of the most popular new items are fitness trackers. People need to count their steps and know their biometric sensitive information at all times. What if I told you this was predicted 35 years ago? I found this book, and in this book, I'll paraphrase the two highlights that I have in the pink Basically, what's being described as de detectives of the future, this was written in 1981, detectives of the future will need to be computer operators or very tech savvy. I agree. I also would suggest that at least 90% of all crime today has some technology or digital component, whether it's in the planning, the commission, or the after crime, right? There's some type of digital component. Someone planned or researched their target, someone actually used crime to hack someone or something like that, or they bragged about it online. The next section talks about how computers will help govern our lives and help keep us safer. We're pretty close. We have access control systems that lets us into our cars. All of this is managed by a computer or some digital device. So how can we help your best friend? Well, I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm not really here to help your best friend. I'm here to find the truth and figure out what happened. I want to tell a story to try to steer the investigation in the right path. So, the question I'm going to ask is, where are the eyewitnesses? Do they exist? And maybe the better question is, where are the digital eyewitnesses? 
because they truly will tell a story once we find them. Now, if I were to ask you, how many digital eyewitnesses do you think is in the room with us today? I would say, a lot. Lots of them are Apple-based products, and they're constantly connecting to Bluetooth. They're trying to. This is just me. I did not hack your phone, I promise. <laughs> I did not hack Roger's iPhone, or the Blackberries, or the Fitbits, or the Garmin Forerunners. But your devices are eyewitnesses to what's happening today. If something were to happen right now, we could look at them and try to figure out what happened. So if I were to approach your best friend's house, I would see this lock. This is a Bluetooth smart lock, a remarkable piece of technology, because it allows you to have a digital key, your cell phone, and you can lock or unlock the smart lock from your phone. A byproduct of this activity is the timeline. I love timelines. It tells a story, and most people can connect to a timeline. So as you can see on the slide, I have a lock, unlock, with a date and time associated with it. Now, I often have to testify at trial, or I have to present my findings to a client. And I'm trying to be neutral. I'm the expert. I'm there just to tell a story about what I found, what my opinion is. So I'm going to start to build a timeline for you today, and we're going to see if we can try to figure out what happened. So we can see the door being unlocked at 331. Maybe this is when someone came home. Then we see the door also being unlocked two more times at, at the 5 o'clock hour. Let's see if there's more devices we can look at. The infamous egg tray, this futuristic device that law enforcement found the two eggs in. This egg tray is attached to an app on your phone. When you're at the store, you're trying to figure out if your eggs are fresh or not, this device will tell you. Now, in order for this magic to occur, this device needs to know when eggs are placed in, because it starts a timer. So I can see that 10 eggs were placed in this egg tray approximately at 3.34 in the afternoon. That big, long string of, day, of numbers, the 14768, is the Unix date time. So this is the epoch date. This is a date that I would see on a computer and recognize instantly. That's a date time. It's translated to 1018, 2016 at 3.34 in the afternoon. Now, what's interesting is I can see an inventory updated, which is essentially at 5.21 PM, only two eggs remained. Let's add this to our timeline. It's not looking too good for your best friend at this point. <laughs> Let's start looking at more devices. This device is a very innocent looking black box sitting in the corner of your home that records high definition video in both light and dark. It also senses any atmospheric or um, smoke in the room. It'll detect that as well, uh, air quality. This device generates thousands of logs. And I parsed these logs and found two relevant ones that were in the time frame of what I was looking for. So I'm going to add this to our timeline in a second, but I want to talk about these three devices. Nest. So Nest makes a camera, a thermostat, and a smoke detector, a carbon monoxide detector. These devices work together. And when, there's a, when the smoke detector detects smoke, the camera will turn on instantly to try to tell the owner of the home what's going on. Or the thermostat needs to adjust itself because it recognizes that someone's in the house. I'm here to tell you that in order for that magic to occur, digital is not magic. It's not Hogwarts. It's not the place that you send your children to learn wizard, wizard, wizardry or witchcraft. Um, it's not, there's a whole bunch of technology that we look at forensically to try to figure out what's happening. And in order for these devices to work, it needs to keep track of dates and times. So every single time you walk by your smoke detector or carbon monoxide detector, it records that. So I can see that someone was in the house. So let's add that to our timeline. So as you can see here, we're starting to get a better picture of what's going on. I, know, I don't know who was there, but I can, I can tell you what's going on in the house. Let's look at one more device, the Amazon Echo. Now this is becoming like the personal assistant. Google's gonna release one of these very soon called the Google, Google Home. And there's a whole bunch of artificial intelligence going on. You can ask these devices questions. What's the weather today? What is my schedule? And it will read your calendar to you. A really neat device. Now, I want to show you what I found here. I'm no culinary expert. I'm an amateur chef at best. But what I'm seeing here, forensically, is someone added three items to a shopping list at approximately 7.03 in the morning. Eggs for a cake, eggs for an omelet, and egg salad. Now again, I'm no expert in culinary crafts, 
but I would assume that you need at least about 10 eggs to pull this off. So I'm here to find the truth. I'm here to try to steer the investigation in one way or the other, you know, to try to figure out what happened. Um, it's important to look at this objectively and try to feed this information to an investigator. Digital forensics is not always the smoking gun, but we do try to find the truth of what's going on and try to complement an investigation. So if we're to add this to our timeline, we now go back in time. Remember that receipt that was on the counter? It's all starting to make sense. So I want to close with a couple concepts. The phone on the left is from 1994. The phone on the right is, is a modern smartphone. We could all agree that technology has evolved over the last 20 years when it comes to cellular technology. The phones now are computers. They do so many different things. IoT is not going to take 20 years to evolve. We're seeing in research that some of these devices have a lot of our artificial intelligence built into it. They're starting to talk to each other and work with each other and suggest things to you. Your car will someday drive you to your favorite restaurant when it knows you're hungry. That's happening. And that's making my job easier because the data is going to tell a story. There's also going to be 20 billion, billion, IoT devices in the world by 2020, according to Gartner. 13 billion will be in households and the rest will be in business, making my job easier. What if I told you that there's a problem with the Internet of Things? That some of these devices are inherently insecure? That someone can access the private information the sensitive data that we're putting into these devices could potentially access, modify, or change the data. And that, my friends, is a tale for another day. Thank you.